you're a fan of the film Brightburn, go ahead and check the comment section down below. I'm going to have a link to a Facebook group. Join that Facebook group and follow the follow the instructions on a Brightburn post for your chance to win a free digital code to Brightburn. Enjoy the video, guys. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. In this video we're going to be talking about who should die in Halloween Kills and whether or not the movie will be keeping its October release date. So we know Halloween Kills is still one of the many movies that hasn't been pushed back just yet. Earlier today we got news that several movies will be pushed back. And we now know that Tenet's being pushed back by a couple of weeks to July 31st. So I don't think anyone's really caring about that. Wonder Woman got pushed from August to October. And now we have Godzilla vs. King Kong being pushed from this year to next year. Sometime in 2021. Now... A lot of people think this is going to have something to do with Halloween Kills at some point. I'm hoping it doesn't. Uh, I really don't think at this point we can afford to keep just pushing movie back. Because at some point you got to sit down and say, well, when are you going to just learn to accept that releasing these movies digitally is your only option? Would they really honestly hold these movies and never release them because they're never going to make any money off of them? Or would they just let the fans and the people that pay to see them enjoy them? Uh, despite the fact that they know they're not going to make a profit off of it, that much of a profit. But getting into the first thing before I talk about the release date, I wanted to talk about who I believe should die, who's going to die, and why why I think a lot of people will die in Halloween Kills. So first things first, the name of the movie is called Halloween Kills. <laughs> so with all these promises of being one of the most glorious depictions of Michael Myers that we've gotten to date, one of the most violent, one of the most grotesque, all these different types of words that have been being used by the people involved with the project and people who are just trying to build hype about it, uh, talking about this is the most darkest and most brutal Halloween movie to date. So... I'm starting to think, are you really trying to top what Rob Zombie did in Halloween 2? Because in my honest opinion, despite Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 being a complete crap movie, that is one of the better uh, the, that is one of the better depictions of Michael Myers in a violent aspect. If we want to talk about Michael Myers being violent, I think Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 is one of the nastiest movies we have in the franchise, most goriest. So if they're trying to go and top that somehow, go ahead for it. But I hope it's not overly brutal, but I I, I think they might do it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be Rob Zombie territory, but they're trying to promote it as if it is going to be. But I think we'll end up losing Tommy Doyle because we know we have Tommy Doyle coming back. We have Lindsay Wallace coming back. We have a few characters from the Halloween 2018 sequel. I believe the sheriff, not the sheriff, but the uh, officer underneath the share from the 2018 film i can't think of his name like thing right now i think it was hawkins or something office hawkins he might come back uh apparently he's supposed to be appearing in halloween kills and we also know again that tommy doyle lindsey wallace jamie lee curtis Lori strode and the strode women are going to be back uh, i honestly think we're going to end up losing tommy doyle we'll end up losing lindsey wallace we'll end up losing sheriff bracket because we know charles cyphers is coming back to play sheriff bracket we'll probably end up losing him and then the final nail in the coffin i believe we'll end up losing judy greer's character of karen strode andy matichak's character i feel like she will be the one left standing by the end of this kind of like the full passing of the torch moment for the next generation kind of to like in in on a note if we ever come back to revisit this type of thing, it would be something to follow Karen, not the character of Karen Stroh, but the character of, I cannot think of Andy Matichak's character's name, Allison Strode, Allison Strode, uh, kind of just symbolizing that we now have only one person left in the Strode women legacy from this continuity. Uh, Michael Myers is going to be dying in Halloween ends in my, in my vision. And we end with Lori Strode having been killed by now. And we now just have Allison Strode left to carry on the legacy of her grandmother and her mother and the story of Michael Myers that she'll pass down about how uh, the, the trauma from her grandmother has now led to all of this. Maybe she'll end up going through some trauma down the road and we just will be left with one surviving final girl with that being the youngest of the Strode women, that being Allison Strode. I don't think 
it would make too much sense for Laurie Strode's character to be the final one left standing in this. I'm not saying Laurie Strode has to die, but I think for it to be more impactful, this should revolve around us passing the torch to Allison Strode. Even though you don't plan on making any more movies, pass that legacy down onto that character. Let her carry the weight of everything that her family endured. Let her carry on the stories of Michael Myers, the memories and everything that she had to endure. Growing up hearing about this and believing her grandmother was crazy. Now she fully understands that her grandmother was not crazy. Her grandmother sacrificed herself to save, save her life. Her mother died in the process of this. So I feel like it would be a very fitting end to the franchise per what they're trying to do with this new trilogy that they're trying to put together. Um, I think we'll end up losing Karen Strode just because I think that would be the most killing blow to kind of bridges into Halloween ends. A lot of people have started talking about I'm going into spoilers. So if you don't want any spoilers, probably don't want to listen to this because this might very well be something that happens. A lot of people have tossed around this idea that. The final scene in Halloween Kills is going to be us hearing that uh, Karen Strode is going to be Michael, not even Karen Strode, not Karen Strode, Michael Myers rather, is going to pick up a phone, make a phone call to Lori Strode, and Lori's going to be receiving that phone call from Karen's phone. Now, Karen is not going to be answering. It's going to be Michael just sitting there breathing, indicating and leaving us in the cliffhanger. Did Michael Myers just kill Karen Strode and call Lori to taunt her about it? And then the movie would end with Lori, of course, letting out a loud, huge, broken hearted cry that any mother would make because she knows that this means her daughter has been killed by the boogeyman, by Michael Myers. And. She'll probably have some vengeful looking eye, some vengeful look in her eyes. And then the movie just ends there. I think that would be a pretty emotional, sad, but at the same time, badass ending to kind of tease us and get us ready for Halloween ends. Because we know that Laurie Strode is now going to take the fight to Michael Myers. And then, of course, Tommy Doyle, Lindsay Wallace, Sheriff Brackett. I feel like those characters are all being brought back to, yes, follow the trauma that they've to pick up with the trauma and expand on this trauma outside of just Lori Stroll so we can learn how they've dealt with it over the past 40 years maybe we get to finally catch up on how Sheriff Brackett feels about the care about his daughter Annie dying all those years ago how Tommy Doyle probably never really recovered from such a traumatizing event as a kid same thing with Lindsay Wallace who appears to have a kid in the movie but she never quite fully came to terms with what she endured in in the 1978 film we just get to find out all these different things that they went through in regards to their trauma and their ptsd and how they over overcame it all if they even did but then obviously i think those characters are just going to be killed off i think we're going to end up losing tommy we're going to end up losing Lindsay. we're going to end up losing sheriff bracket if we had to keep one of them keep tommy if we had to keep one i would want us to keep tommy doyle i would want to keep that character around uh, Sheriff Brackett, I fully believe he will die. And I think Karen Strode will be the final death that we get in the movie in a, a very emotional, impactful way to kind of bridge us into uh, Halloween ends. But getting into the release date possibly being changed. As far as I know, that movie is still set to come out on October 16th of this year. However, during a recent interview with uh, Judy Greer on Entertainment Tonight, uh, Jason Blum had this to say when basically they when the interview brought up the fall release of Halloween Kills he said I don't know how it's coming out but I'm hoping it's still pushing for it to come out still in October so Jason Blum is still actively pushing for this movie to come out in October letting me know that there's already talks of them pulling it from that release date and then also at the same time it sounds like we might be getting Halloween Kills they're weighing the option of releasing this movie digitally he because he says i don't know how it's coming out so of course he's just probably speaking in the moment and not really meaning what he's saying but of course we're gonna then look at these words and interpret that as halloween kills might be released digitally it might not even go to theaters it might just go straight to vod for audiences to enjoy at their house because the studio is not willing to or not wanting to put the movie out in theaters because of the little box office performance that it might have but I don't really I don't really get it. Not even that because of the fact he also doesn't know because Universal has this little thing going on where they're having discussions with AMC. We know AMC is having discussions with them where they don't even want to show Universal films. So that's putting a uh, wrench in things. 
Uh, we don't know if AMC will be even willing to show these movies just yet. They're they're in the process of talking. Apparently, that's what we learned during the conference call AMC had this week when they were talking about reopening. But at the end of the day, they might not even show Halloween Kills if nothing is is resolved between Regal, AMC, and them showing these Universal films. But let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.